In this so easy video, I'm going to show you how to make mitered borders. This is a technique that looks a little difficult, but it really isn't once you know how to do it. We often do just straight borders where we put a piece across the top and bottom or the side and side and then the top and bottom or the side and side so that you just sort of like a log cabin they overlap each other and that's fine on a busy fabric but when you have well here I'm going to use a print and a tone on tone so you can really see the seam sometimes you want it to look a little dressier and also with the mitered borders there's the lines that go to radiate towards the center so not only do you have nice neat borders but also they kind of can add to the design they really aren't as difficult as they look so I'm going to show you how to make them. Now I'm starting, I'm just going to use a little, this little square that my friend Sheila Round made for me. She wrote a book with that patchwork place a couple years ago called Cats and Hats. She's just known for her cats and she does just fantastic work. I've had this for a while. I thought this is a very good opportunity to put some borders on it and turn it into maybe a little pillow or something. So I've um, squared this up and made it nice and neat and trimmed it out. And then I've made some border pieces and I've taken strips that are way too long for what I need them for. And that's the key to this so you don't have to worry about having enough fabric. And I wanted to have a little bit of red around before I had the black to bring out the red in the bird. So I just st stitched a, this is a one inch strip onto a two and a half inch black strip. So now I'm gonna be able to put um, both borders at once. So let's get to it. Here I have my little block. I'm going to sew the first border piece onto the top and I'm finding the center of the border piece. It doesn't have to be exact because you see I have a ton left over over here for um, making my miter. Better to have way too much than, than you need than not enough. Now right here what I need to do is start sewing about a quarter inch in from where, from the um, edge of the actual kitty square. And so I'm going to mark that. You can either do it with a pin or with a pencil on here. I think I'll just take a pin and mark it. You can measure it. I've gotten really good over the years knowing what a quarter inch looks like, so I'm just going to stick the pin in there. And now I've dropped my presser foot so that the needle's going to come down just the side of that pin. And actually, really, I can take that pin out now because I've made my placement. And so I'm going to stitch a few stitches, three, and then I'm going to back stitch a few stitches, one, two, three. And now I'm just going to sew my seam. When you come to the end of the seam, you want to do the same thing. I've added a pin here, a quarter inch in from the edge. You want to sew up to that pin. Bump, bump, one more. Yeah, one more. And then you want to back stitch. So now we've sewn that seam and we're going to want to do all the other sides too. And as you can see, this has left this little bit of a quarter inch. And you want to be very careful when you sew the next one that you don't stitch onto this other border piece because then you won't get a nice neat miter. Now I'm coming to my last one and when you are sewing, coming up to one that's already sewn, the easiest thing to do, of course, is to leave them at right angles to each other. But this one underneath, do fold it down. And then it's very easy for you to find where you need to stop because not only can you see it, but you can feel it because you can feel the lump here. So you can stop just a stitch short of it because usually a sewing machine, when you go to back stitch, see it takes an extra stitch. So you want to make sure that you don't get into this fabric. So there we go. I've got them all stitched. Okay, so I have my, fin my borders all sewn on, and now I need to mark the corners, the miters, so that I can actually sew this together. And what you want to do is I've folded this in half so that the kitty is folded in half. And now I'm going to line up the, this whole strip here. This should be actually folded right along that diagonal so that this is all laying flat right in here. And what you're going to do is you're going to take a ruler and you're going to mark along this line through, whoops, I want to get that flat. You want to mark on this line through the, um, all along the border. So that you'll be extending this line out is what you're doing when you stitch. And I've got this chalk marker, which I can see really well. This is a gray that I'm using on the black. So I'm going to be able to see that real well. If you want to pin that together, you can, you can just hold it and take it over to your sewing machine. 
Now I'm putting my presser foot down right at the end of the point of the stitching from when I actually put the borders on and right where my line is. And now I'm going to take a few stitches and then back stitch back up there. Go on. And then I'm just going to sew along the line. And then when I'm back at the beginning or back at the edge, I'm going to back tack again just to hold it. And there I have my first miter. Let's see how it looks. Pretty darn good, I'd say. So now I'm going to do the other three. So my block is finished. I've got all my miters done. And now I'm just going to trim off the extras here. And I'll give it a good press here. And I'll give it here. It's here. And I'll give it here. And I'll give it here. It's here. And I'll give it 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 here. And I'll